Welcome to Virtual Paint Night. Turn on some light music and get ready to paint a masterpiece. Special thanks to our three sponsors, USAA, serving the military community and their families for over 98 years. First Command, taking pride in helping clients get financially squared away from the start of their military careers to retirement and beyond. And finally, Randolph Brooks Federal Credit Union. Alrighty guys, welcome back to our JBSA virtual painting tutorials. Um, this month we are doing a fun little pumpkin for November. Um, so we're going to start with our three quarter of an inch flat brush. And what I have put on my palette is everything for the background. So you can see it, it's the titanium white, cadmium yellow, um, blue, I want to say it's a brilliant blue, and then black. So we're going to fade from about two-thirds down the way canvas. We're going to go white into yellow into blue and then black up at the top. So the first thing I want you to do is dip your flat brush into the water and then kind of wipe it off a little bit on your paper towel. Remember when we are changing colors, I will let you know, I'll prompt you. If we need to wipe our brush or rinse our brush, we're going to wipe it. So we pinch it like this, pull the paint off, and then we rinse in the water. Um, all right, so first things first, flat brush into water, dry it off, and then we're going to go ahead and dip into the white. Now with the white, we're starting about two-thirds of the way down the canvas, so probably right about here, and we're going to make like a half circle. Just kind of windshield wipe it back and forth. Dip a little bit more. And kind of build that out. Okay, after we have the white, we are not going to rinse or wipe our brush. We're going to dip our brush half in white, half in yellow. So you're going to take the flat part of your brush. You're going to dip one side of it into white. And then you're going to flip it over and dip the other side into the yellow. So your brush should look like this. Do we fill in the center of our white or do it open Yeah, so it's white all here. So it's almost like a moon, a half moon. Once you have your yellow and your white on your brush, you're going to go to where you stopped painting white, and then you're going to arc it out. You can kind of blend it in a little bit down below. And then once you've created that blending, we're going to go ahead and dip the entire brush into yellow. And we're going to keep following our arch. Like before, if you like to hang your paintings on the wall, don't neglect the sides of your canvas. You want to make sure you paint those as well. If you pop it in a frame, you don't need to worry about the sides. Okay. I think I like where that yellow is, so what I'm going to do is take I'm going to wipe my brush. I'm not going to rinse it though. Just go ahead and wipe your brush with your paper towel and then dip it back into the white. We're going to go along the top side and we're going to fade this white out again or this yellow back into the white. you've 
then that, we're going to do the same thing we did with the yellow and the white together. We're going to take our brush, we're not going to wipe it or rinse it, dip it half in the white and then half in the blue. So your brush looks like this. And then you're going to put the white side of your brush against the white arch and then the blue is going to pop out at the top. And we'll just use your windshield wiping motion to kind of blend that all together. You're going to dip your brush straight into the blue and then windshield wipe across almost to the top. Like I said, we've got some black going in, but black's going to be predominantly just on those top corners. So now I just have the very top corners of my canvas that are not painted. I'm going to go ahead and dip my brush into the black and just paint those corners and blend that down. A little bit of black goes a long way so you don't pull it down too far. And there we have the background. Um, I am not too happy with the way this, the yellow to the blue is blending out on mine. So what I'm going to do is wipe my brush off completely, rinse it out completely, and then probably go back in with some more white and yellow and kind of blend that out a little bit.
once you get the top part of the background done, we're going to let that dry and then we are going to add our pumpkin. So go ahead and wipe your brush out completely on your paper towel and then rinse it off really well. Alrighty guys, so um, my canvas is pretty much dry. We are going to be working predominantly on the bottom, so by the time we're done painting our pumpkin, the top of the canvas should be dry where we're going to be adding the final touches. Um, if you want to dry your canvas faster, you can definitely take a blow dryer to it. Works very well. Um, I have gone ahead and added more colors to my canvas, or not my canvas, my palette. So I've added a cadmium orange, a brilliant yellow, cadmium red, and then a burnt umber. Um, so basically orange, yellow, red, and brown. And um, we already used a yellow, so if you don't have the second color of yellow, it's okay. You can mix a little bit of the white with the cadmium yellow, and it's going to make more of a brilliant yellow color. All right, jumping right in. So we already wiped and rinsed our brushes. They should be a little bit damp. We're going to use the three-quarter flat brush again, and I want you guys to just dip the entire thing into that bright, brilliant, or no, cadmium orange. All right, guys. So we are creating a pumpkin. Try to picture one in your head and you're going to go from there. Um, you can follow me exactly or you can be very organic with your movements. It's completely up to you. So I'm going to start on the left side of my canvas. Um, my arch right here is um, in the center. So I'm going to start my pumpkin again two thirds down the way and I'm just going to kick out a little round. And this is all going to be more windshield wiper movements because we are creating a bunch of arches. Um, so now I'm going to go to the other side of my canvas and I'm going to do another one, the other side of my pumpkin. And then I'm just going to keep creating these lines. Now we are going to be layering more and more on this pumpkin. So our first layer is going to disappear. But just so you can get that general shape in your head. And then we have the back of the pumpkin. So I'm going to... A little arch coming towards the back, and then I'll do another one over here. And I think that's it. So now we're just going to fill all of this in with our cadmium orange. But follow those lines that you made. So your paint is going, the paint strokes are going to create this pumpkin shape. Okay, and if you notice, I have not 
completely closed in my lines. I've left kind of a little bit of a white space in between. Um, oh gosh. It just says a guide <laughs> for myself. Again, don't forget to paint the edges of your canvas. Once you've gotten your first layer of orange on, um, I'm out of orange, so I'm going to have to give myself a little bit more. Don't wipe your brush. We're going to be blending all of these colors together. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to pull some of that cadmium red just a little bit on your flat brush, and then you're going to go back around your pumpkin shapes, the shapes that you created. If you need to, so my paint is starting to get a little bit tacky, you are more than welcome to dip your paint in some water to help you blend a little bit. So once you have that red on there to kind of define your shapes, you can go back in with the orange and kind of throw a little bit more.
so the very center of your pumpkin, the very like center piece should be one solid piece, almost like a, it's like a little balloon in the middle of your canvas. After we've added some red in, we're going to go in with our, we're going to dip our brush a little bit in the orange, so we're going to do this half and half technique, and then take that brilliant yellow, just a little bit, and we're going to go where you created your red lines to outline your pumpkin sections, kind of go along the edge, we're going to be highlighting our pumpkin. So. A little more of a highlight on the center pumpkin piece. Okay, as far as highlighting goes, if you are happy with just the yellow and how it looks right now, you can leave it and skip this next step. Um, I think I'm going to try to go in with some white and throw in a little bit more of a brighter highlight on just kind of like the very round quality of the pumpkin. So I'm just dipping very, very tiny amount. And I'm actually going to wipe a little bit of that off only. Very small amount of white. And you want to 
pinch it out, trying to separate my bristles. And then go in and just lightly And if you highlight and you don't like it, you can dip it in some orange and come and highlight it up. All right, from here, you can go ahead and wipe your flat brush and rinse it. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put more definition between the sections of our pumpkin. So we're going to take our number four round brush. Make sure it's not stiff if you've been using the same brushes that we've been painting with as you rinse them, they kind of stiffen up. So just make sure your bristles are nice and soft. And then we're going to dip our round brush into our burnt umber, so our brown. After you dip your brush in the paint, I want you to, on the edge of your plate or your palette, take your brush, pull and roll, so you're getting a lot of that excess paint off. You don't want a ton of paint on your brush. Okay, so now if you are anything like me, I was not very focused on the cleanliness of my lines, um, so this is where we're going to make it a little bit sharper. So I'm going to follow these sections and right where we had like the brightest part of the red, we're going to outline our pumpkin pieces. You've got your initial lines on, you can kind of like cross hatch and sketch in a little, add a little bit more lines if you want.
Are we adding like a stem or anything in the middle? Yes. Okay. So once you're here and you like the way you blend it, if you're happy with um, your brown lines, you can leave it. Um, if you still feel like there's a little bit too much red in the middle, too much yellow, you can take your orange and go back in and blend it. Um, I'd recommend grabbing your wider brush for it. Um, you can even use a half inch round brush. Um, I like the way mine is, so I'm going to go ahead and leave it. I'm going to let it dry, and then we are going to be adding a stem. Um, and then you will be done with your pumpkin. If you want to get a little crazy and, um, you know, kind of fall back to Halloween, we can add a spider web and a spider. Um, I'll also maybe, like, throw a leaf down in here somewhere so I can um, show you how to paint a leaf. But, um, yeah, go ahead and let this dry, and then we'll add our stem in so you can wipe your brush and rinse it for now. Okay guys, so now we're going to be doing the stem. For this one, we're going to need our number four round brush, which we've been using, and our three quarter inch flat brush, which we have also been using. These are the only two we're using on this painting. Um, all right, so first things first, we're going to look at our pumpkin. So my pumpkin, all of my pieces come together. I'm going to take my stem and kind of bring it from where all these pieces meet and then S it up. So if it's easier for you, you can take your smaller brush and kind of bring all your pieces together in the middle using your small brush. And oh, dip in the brown paint. Sorry. So now you've just created like a brown spot where all of your sections meet. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go like a backwards S. So I'll just draw a little line. That's going to be the shape of my step. But this is going to come out. To meet with sections. And I want my stem to be fat, so so that's what my stem is going to look like, and then I'm just going to fill this line out that I've created. So now once I've got my brown on, now I'm going to use the same brown brush. I'm not going to wipe anything off. Um, we are going to go into the black. So remember, black goes a long way. So just a little bit of black. We're going to create this line in our stem. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to start here at the tip. We're going to go up to right here, the top of our stem here, and then we're going to drag it across our stem and then down and follow that curve. So it looks like our stem is almost twisting. Also want to take a little bit of black and kind of outline the back of my stem. Now after this, I'm just going to roll the excess paint off my brush, dip my brush back into the brown and a little bit in the white. So we've got put a white and brown hand block on here. And then I'm just going to follow this S and kind of highlight it. After I do that, I'm going to go black back into the black and kind of darken up the base of my stem. And you can kind of follow the lines of your pumpkin sections and then kind of just pull up into your stem. Okay, so that is your pumpkin. If you like the way he looks, you can leave him. Um, or we can add some little curly cues. So that will be the next step. Um, I want you to wipe your brush. You're not going to rinse it, just wipe it. And then we're going to start. Go ahead and roll your brush in the brown. And you can put these little curly Q willow looking things. Um, so it's just part of your pumpkin vine. So you can put them coming off the base of your pumpkin. You can put one coming out of the top of your pumpkin um, stem. It's really your preference. So I think I'm going to, I want one coming out this way. So we're just going to create a little squiggly line. Do it light at first and then you can go back and darken it up so you can do 
another layer of the brown on top, and if you want to, you can highlight it with some black to just make it pop. Or low light it should have paint. And these um, vines coming off of your pumpkin, completely organic. You can put them anywhere you would like. You can have one vine, two vines, zero vines, seven vines, completely up to you. So after you're here, wipe your brush, rinse it off, you can be done, or we can move on. I think the next step I'm going to move on to is show you how to do the spider web, since that's what we had on the picture, and then I will do a leaf last. So if you would like to add the spider web, make sure your brush is completely rinsed off because we're going to be using the same number four round brush and we're going to be using the white paint. So I'm going to keep mine like the example picture. I'm going to run my spider web up and off the side of the canvas, so the right side. Um, you do not have to do that. You can run your spider web down onto the pumpkin. You can run it this way. Again, completely up to you. I'm just going to try to keep consistent with what was on the marketing. Um, Alrighty, so diving in, we're going to use our number four round brush, dip it into the white paint. So make sure that this, you don't want to put a lot of pressure because you want a very light line. So what we're going to do first is draw the straight lines and then we're going to fill it in. So I'm going to have my well, spider web starting at the very top of this like little vining off of my stem. So I'm going to go out to the middle very lightly. And you're almost creating just a starburst. I don't know if you guys can see that, it's very light. I 
carry this web all the way down to where it's touching my pumpkin right here. Okay, so now that I have the starburst of the web, I'm going to fill it in. So we're going to go back to our arch shape. And you can do broken lines actually look really good on a spider web. So we're going to go in this way. So I'm going to in kind of like waves. And so there you have the spider web. You can leave it just a spider web. I'm going to go ahead and drop a spider down right here. So what I'm going to do for that is not wipe my brush it. Use dip my brush in baggage in the white paint and see I think I want him right here. Just kind of draw a little spider web line. And then you're going to wipe your brush because we're going to go into the plaque. So wipe and rinse your brush, and then we're going to go into the black. So my line ended right about here, and the spinner comes out of the spider's abdomen, so we want to make sure that we have connected that still. Um, so we're going to do one small circle. and then it connects to an even smaller one. So you've just created the body of the spider. So for those of you at Nature Buffs out there, how many legs do spiders have? So spiders have eight legs. So we're gonna go ahead and my first set of legs, they're all going to come out of the abdomen. So what I'm gonna do is it's going to be almost a very extended V. So I'm gonna do my first legs going down this way, two, two sets, and then the other sets going up, up towards the web. Or maybe not, we'll see. Okay, so first set of legs. I want them to kind of look like they're meeting. Next set. And make sure you press lightly on these spider legs. And then this last set, I actually want him to the spider, so. That's what. All right, so that's my spider. You guys can make your spider's legs very long, you can make them very short, you can have them going in all types of directions. Again, completely up to you. If you would like to stop here, you totally can. I'm going to leave um, some black on my brush, dip it a little bit in the white, and kind of give this 
He's got a little highlight on his body. And then I'm done with my spider. So go ahead and blow dry it. Sign it in the bottom right hand corner. You always want to sign your masterpiece. And I'm going to decide where I want to throw a couple leaves. Okay. Alright guys, so um, last step, only if you want to, we're going to go ahead and add some pumpkin leaves to our pumpkin. Um, so we're going to be using sap green and light green. Light green. So I'm using the same palette, it's getting a little messy. Um, and we're going to be using our three quarter inch brush. We really like that one today. Um, it is a little large, so make sure that it's rinsed off. Um, you can kind of pinch out the water and you can kind of pinch it together. What we're gonna do is the same technique as when we were blending. We're gonna do half of our brush in one green, half in the other. So go ahead and dip our brush, so half into the sap green, and then half into the liquid. Okay, so the sap green, which is the dark green, and if you don't have sap green and light green, you can use a dark green and a light green, or you can use dark green, mix a little bit of dark green with white to make a lighter green. Bottom line is you want two different color shades of green. So now these typically are found on the vines, so hopefully you added some vines into your picture. If you didn't and you want to add the pumpkin leaves, pause right now, go ahead and throw some vines in, and then you can press play again and you can start with the leaves. So pumpkin leaves have a, more like a grape leaf shape. Um, so I'm just going to paint one for you and you can see what I'm doing. So I'm gonna start with the green, the dark greens on the outside. I'm gonna paint my leaf right here. So I'm just doing So almost like a three. Not a three, but it's, um, what would you describe that as? <laughs> a pea pod? Like one pea pod? <laughs> Let me see if you guys can see it. So that's basically the shape you want on one side, and then we want to mash it on the other. So now dark green out. And then we're going to throw a little edge up there. So this is our leaf. Now if you would like, we're going to, I'm going to go ahead and take, oh, where to go? The round brush, and I'm just going to pull straight to my vine. I have no paint on this brush. I'm just kind of creating a shape. And so there's a leaf. One leaf. Um, after it dries, we can go ahead and highlight it, or you can highlight it now. Let's see what that looks like. So I dipped my brush in a little bit of white. So there's a highlighted leaf. <clears throat> Now I'm going to add a couple more because one looks a little funny. So back into the paint I go, half dark green, half light green. Probably on a third, right? Everything's better in knots. No. Little thirds. Like over here. Okay, so going in with my last leaf and I'm looking upside down.
And those are our thumbnails. So we are now complete. Thank you guys for joining us. Um, and then our next picture, I believe, it's right around Christmas time. So we're not going to do anything too Christmassy. I think we're going to try to do winter. But stay tuned. Um, we will be posting our next project. I hope to see you guys then. Thank you.